Hello, lovely people. Welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch, and thank you so much for tuning in. So today's video, we're going to be doing a browse through of the September 2023 issue of Birda Style. And so we're at the end of August here in England. In fact, as I record this, this is the last day of August. And I still have so many beautiful summery color plants in my um in my garden so initially i was planning on picking out the yellows and the reds because the cover has got a lot of yellow in it and because it's technically speaking the beginning of autumn but you know what i've got so many beautiful japanese anemones over here in blue and in white and i've got some sweet peas over here i also have of course the gorgeous english rose the english summer rose i have some white geraniums as well and some white japanese anemone over here and of course although fuchsias do not make good um, cut flowers i could not resist sharing this with you this is my favorite fuchsia plant i've got several but this one is the prettiest as far as i'm concerned with the beautiful pinks and the whites <laughs> and so there we are oh i also have an aster here i always grow asters every year from seed and i just love how feathery and wonderful they are and i got a lot of pinks this year so wherever you are in the world i am sending you this lovely pink and white bouquet from my english garden and it smells so beautiful as well so i not yet ready to accept that summer is nearly over because i had a really wonderful camping trip when i was in italy details of which i will talk about later on i'm now here to talk about the line drawings because as we know being seamstresses and all of that line drawings are a very integral part to the decisions that we make about what we're going to sew and what we're going to be planning with our wardrobes so i've got the line drawings and just looking at a glance there's a lot of interesting shapes a lot of interesting colors and even though i haven't had a lot of time to think about what i was going to sew because i was on holiday in glorious italy and france and spain i still have some favorites that i definitely hope to be making so let's get into it so the first one is just a simple jumper style with drop sleeves cuffed hems over there and it's got this dangly detail at the sides which we've seen a few times already in the last few months and it's not a trend that i'm backing i don't think it's necessary to have that sweatshirts work let's keep sweatshirts the way that they are okay and then we move over onto a very simple style wrap top which for the life of me i thought that this was quite interesting until i realized that it has a what i think of as a modesty panel over here so as you can see you go through the extra hassle of actually sewing something that goes over there and i don't think that the v on this particular wrap top is necessarily deep enough to warrant a modesty panel um, I'd just be wearing it with a cami underneath. So um, that's what I thought about that when I saw it. I prefer the dress version of this rather than the top version of that. And then we have a dress that has been segmented. And you've got sort of like an asymmetrical cut at the waist over here. And then gathering. So the, sorry, not quite at the waist. It's more like empire line. So it does... It's just got enough of a jaunt to it to create some interest. But at the same time, I'm not necessarily sure that it's good interest, if you get what I mean. I'm still, I don't quite like this style personally because it lacks the waist definition, even though there's some fitting around the bust here. So it'll be interesting to see whether this becomes a popular one with people here. They've used um, color blocking where they've used a different color over the top, which is a solid and then a lighter color at the bottom. Hmm. Again, for me, I sort of feel like if you're going to go for blocking like this, I always feel like the lower half of the body should have the solid color because that creates the illusion of weight, the illusion of stability. And the upper bit should be the one that's got the print. So if you think about the 
pencil skirt silhouette for instance if you wear a pencil skirt with a top it looks so much better when the pencil skirt is the solid color and then the top is the print rather than the other way around i think personally so that was that one and then we come on to number one of my favorites number one is in the first one in the book not in terms of favorite <laughs> by the way and we've got these jeans here that have some segmentation some contrasting that you can do with different um, loads of uh, with loads of different types of fabrics if you're interested in that and some very interesting hip yoke pockets so definitely a lot of interest my main interest in these is that to me they fit the soft gamine principles so they're tap tapered here at the ankle and they go in at the waist I can't quite tell whether they are high-waisted in the picture, unfortunately, but to me it would tick all the boxes, particularly if it's high-waisted and it hits my high waist. Here they've done it in the contrasting fabric, and it does look lovely on this particular model, but you have to be so careful with the contrasted fabric because this can create this can actually eat up your legs. So if you're somebody who dresses in a way to elongate your silhouette, it's probably best to stick to just a solid color because this actually shortens your legs and I think you can get away with that if you're a statuesque model who's already tall anyway but say on somebody like me I probably wouldn't be going for the contrasting over here I might actually do the contrasting more on the pocket just to add interest onto my hip area over there so I quite like this one and I'm keen to see what's going to happen with this one within the Berta sewing community and then we have a very, um, at the face of it, it's a very simple dress, right? Uh, because it's got the circular neckline over here and, you know, it doesn't really have any sleeve shaping that, you know, to worry about. And it just goes straight down and you've got the sleeve vents. Where it becomes more complicated is that it's got this patchwork thing going here which would require an incredible amount of skill and kudos to whoever their sample sewist is who made this because it just it looks incredible now personally for me i tend to prefer things to be easier and simpler to do and for me this just looks like you know that 90s style where people would wear a t-shirt and they would wear a slip dress with you know those ultra thin straps to me this kind of looks like that from afar you wouldn't realize that it's actually one piece until you got closer because when you see this you would just assume that it's that strappy dress style over a t-shirt so i feel like if you wanted to achieve this look you could easily do that without having to go through the hassle of doing all the intricate stitching plus it doesn't have that much shaping i think you'd maybe add a belt to it i tend to prefer shaping on the waist personally okay and then we've got the better version of that top which is the dress and i must say i love the bishop sleeves that they have here i think you can never go wrong with a bishop sleeve because you get all of that volume and then it's tucked in so it doesn't get in the way as much when you're doing stuff interesting styling with the um, uh, polo normally it would be for me when i wear wrap dresses in winter or in autumn i tend to have a close fitting turtleneck but here they've got something a little bit chunkier which i think is quite interesting i might try something like this style wise um, this coming fall and then we've got a paneled overskirt um here which is just basically your simple gathered skirt dindle style and then it's just got a panel over it and you can just have fun playing with the different style uh, different fabrics so here they've got the solid with the color on there oh gosh look at all of that it's so popping in color really quite popping and yeah okay and then we have this one which is the i know they call it a coat but to me this looks like a jacket a jacket coat right so it's oversized it's got the shape of a shirt right giant oversized pockets always very very useful and then you've got a covered placket over here and then you've got button down cuffs i wouldn't be wearing this as a coat i don't think that coats should have things like this on it like a cuff that you have to button um that you have to button on because i would imagine that if you have to take this off you have to unbutton these so yeah i don't know why they've called it a coat it's more like a shacket in my opinion i do like their use of uh, clear transparent snaps 
um, on there to create a clean silhouette and the nice hem I could see this one being quite popular and you could also make it as a dress um, if you wanted to and then there's a pattern to make this croissant bag over here which looks quite nice might be something to try at some point and that shacket is the featured sewing lesson which is lovely and then i absolutely loved this fashion classic series that they seem to have started doing and i hope they continue with it but they've done the button down shirt right and they do a little bit of history on the button down shirt and it's really really fabulous although one thing that they didn't answer which i would love to know the answer to is why is it that men's shirts you do um, you do your buttons left over right but with women is right over left I've never quite understood why they have that difference but anyway needless to say this is a great classic pattern um, I love that it's got the shaping in the form of the bust that's over here and it's got the back fish eye dots and it's got a yoke and a decent button placket so everything that you want and I love how they've made it in this light blue cotton poplin here I have some cotton shirting fabric that I picked up from Barcelona which I'll show in a video haul because I picked up some fabrics when I went traveling and it is beautiful and I think it's going to work really really well for this and this is a staple it's such a classic to have in your wardrobe I just I was very happy to see this and I want to make this because currently the shirt pattern that I've been using to make shirts for myself is the Grainline Studios Archer but that one doesn't have any shaping it doesn't have the bust studs and it doesn't have these back studs so it's a bit more straight but I would love to have something that's a bit more fitted and given that bird sizing always works so well for me and I don't have to do a broad shoulder adjustment I'm quite excited to to do that one okay and then we move on to the modern ladies segment which is just really classic styles in some more modern fabrics and I loved this segment because I do tend to veer towards the I like the silhouette of the classic style very much I admire it so we've got a jacket um, over here and it's got some military elements to it from the buttons that they have used on the sample and even the color is like a hunter green absolutely lovely and impeccable tailoring with that collar and then it's added a little bit of modern edge with the asymmetrical hem that we have over here which just adds a little bit of interest and a little bit of movement and of course there's shaping here with the princess seam lines and right at the back and i think that that looks really lovely and very classy and then we move on to i think the fall version of a tea dress and i can just see this being a lovely tea dress right and i was so smitten with this particular style because it does take the soft gamin principles as as well as tapered in at the waist and it's tapered in at the neckline and it's a slightly higher neckline which works well for soft gamins and it's also tapered in at the wrist but then I looked at the back and oh my goodness I thought what on earth is going on here the back is open and then you have a tight thingy majigi at the back this is supposed to be a full dress the last thing I want is for any gaping at you know between my shoulder blades so if I were to make this I would just basically be removing that open gaping at the back and you can't really tell on the pictures actually so even on the previews I hadn't been able to see that that's what was happening but it's a lovely tea dress and they've used a really lovely 1970s style print it's been made in a viscose so yeah not a big fan of the glasses that they've used there though and then we've got a modern take on the pencil skirt silhouette that I was mentioning earlier and you've got the darker color at the bottom which I think works so much better and this one is made in faux leather and we've got some hori uh, some asymmetrical lines slashing across almost creating a spiral and again, for those that want to challenge themselves to take their sewing to the next level, this would be a great pattern to go with. I tend to prefer to keep my pencil skirts very simple um, personally, but as you can see here, the sample sew waist is really on point because the way that they have matched this seam line across the skirt vent is incredible and the invisible zipper inserted into this foul leather incredible 
um, they should definitely keep whoever they're using for these um, sample sewing. And then we move on to this section with A. We'll start off with this top over here. So it's a very simple sleeveless top with some bust darts. A little bit more loose fitting. This reminds me more of the Scandinavian style, particularly in the earthy tones that they have used. So quite, um, quite flowy, quite loose fitting. Although I'm not sure what's going on here because looking at the picture, this bust dart to me looks like it's a little bit too low. Um, for my liking so that's just something to watch out for but then we've got another classic in here so we had the shirt that's the classic the button down classic and then these the Marlena Dietrich wide leg trousers always a classic particularly for those that can carry them off and these ones they add the volume by having a pleat at the front and you'll notice that they don't have a waistband so that is my beefs with them i do think that wide leg trousers can look so fabulous but i feel that they need that segmentation at the waist that is provided with um, a waistband and on here they don't actually show them without the waistband so here she's got like an a cummerband uh, put over it and it looks gorgeous doesn't it with the wide leg trousers over there it's very very classy particularly if you have a waistband on it i'd be curious to see if anybody within the breeder community is going to make these with a waistband and then we've got another classic piece as well which is the quilted coat and to be fair you don't have to use a quilted fabric to make this you could use a wool you could use a boiled wool or even a lighter weight wool if you wanted something more for fall and it's just got a belt and it's got some pockets over there and it has got a flare which is very nice and again um this fits a lot of the soft gamine coat characteristics um that you would need so it goes in at the waist and it's got a belt tapered at the wrist over there and it goes up all the way to the neckline so it does hit all of those spots for me unfortunately i'm not looking for a coat pattern at the moment however i do know that if i do need to be making a coat this is definitely going to be in the top five of my short list and then we've got a top simple jersey top well, it's supposedly uh, simple because it's made out of a uh, jersey. However, one of my biggest beefs with birders sometimes is how they have a fascination with inserting zips into jersey. And that is so challenging to do. And in order for you to get this collar to neatly stand up, you need to interface the facing and it's... I feel like I've I've done a top like this before that required interfacing and zip on it and it's a jersey, a lightweight jersey. And I have personally found that I don't get as much wear out of them because after something like three, four, five washes, it's just harder to maintain that nice crisp collar on there. And it only works if you use a slightly thicker jersey, like a pointy. With the pointy ones, yeah, you can make them last a bit longer. But the key thing to making this sort of a collar a success with a knit fabric and a zipper, you need to get the right interfacing. So you really need to be willing to pay a little bit more to get decent interfacing in order to make that work. Otherwise, sort of the lower priced interfacing that would normally work with the cotton, you know, with them. Um, other stuff with cottons or whatever, it, it just won't cut the master with this particular style. But lovely fabric, lovely fabric. <laughs> Little rant aside, moving on, we have a classic sheep dress which has had some ruching added to it, which is a very interesting detail. I like what they did on here where they've used um, a crepe. I think it is a crepe. Oh no, they've used a liar cell, but it looks like they've used the reverse. One side is matte and the other side is shiny, which I've seen in... Um, double crepe or triple crepes where it's shiny on the one side and then the other side isn't and i do think that this can be very gorgeous particularly for under the key bid it would work so well for the classic um silhouette because they can carry off some of these um ruchins on here but really beautiful i really cannot wait to see what people do with this one and then over here we have the oversized gigantic blouse which um i don't have much to say about except for i like their use of elasticated cuffs over here yeah i'm i mean yeah i don't 
I have no words for this one. But great color palette. They've used a very lovely soft autumn color palette. And then we've got a section here on how to style the lovely patterns that are in here. And then we go on to the biker chic trend, which is like the edgy classic uh, wardrobe. So first off, we have this um, dress, a strapless dress here, which has got a center panel that goes straight down. So this is great for elongating the silhouette. And then you've got the angled waist over here and a zipper. It's been made in a tartan fabric, yellow and black. And I think overall, the look that they've gone for here, it, it does hold together and it's very cohesive. And I, I quite liked, even though I don't go for this edgy sort of dressing where you've got the leather and you've got the studs and the exposed metallic zippers i could still appreciate the aesthetic when i saw it on here so i thought oh quite, quite well 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 done and then we have i think possibly for me one of the best men's sections that we've had in a while because every single one of the men's patterns I would definitely make. So first off is this, I call this, I think I think of this as the Wolverine jacket. I don't know if anybody remembers Hugh Jackman's Wolverine from the X-Men movies of the early 2000s. I'm showing my age here. But I have always loved this style of jacket. It's nice and cropped. And I've been meaning to make something like this for my husband. So this is something that I do want to make as a long-term project for my husband. I absolutely loved the silhouette of this midi dress. I thought that this is such a great style because of two things, right? So number one, this is the edgy, um, you know, sort of like the biker chic edgy section. And I love how they have taken a really feminine silhouette that has got a sweetheart neckline because you can never go wrong with a sweetheart neckline. It is just such a lovely neckline, you know, and they've made it in this um, black technical fabric, which I think is some sort of a, a scuba crepe or something like that, given how the skirt is holding and they've made it look really nice, like a, a, a wonderful overlap of femininity and edginess. I quite like that. I really, I, I thought, oh, wow, kudos to that, um, to whoever came up with the styling for this. I thought that that was really great styling. So it's got a lot of intricate detail, a lot of um, seam lines, obviously. And even though they've used a different color, to highlight the stitch lines which is fantastic because you can really see how everything works and how it translates onto this so i feel i feel like you know 10 out of 10 marks for this you know and yeah it's fabulous and i can see myself making this perhaps in denim in a nice indigo denim i mean i wouldn't use mustard top stitching personally i'd still use the the blue top stitching but i love this i really do like this i think that this is great and i think that this will be a wonderful addition for an autumn winter wardrobe that you can wear with a layer over it with your boots boom so yeah even though i'm not a biker chic or you know edgy person i quite liked that okay and then we've got those trousers again so remember when i was mentioning before that you have to be careful with the segmentation that it can sort of eat up your legs it can make your legs look shorter here we see it all done in one color and we can see how obviously she's a very tall model we know that but she looks even taller her legs look even longer because of that and that's the same thing that would happen to anybody of any height size so if you're dressing to elongate your length definitely you know keep it to the same color but beautiful i like it they've made it in a, made it in a denim and this is how i would probably try and make it for me personally the things to watch out for if you prefer higher waisted trousers like i do i would be making a twirl to see where that is in case i need to adjust that to increase so that it's more high waisted but yeah fabulous and then we have the gigantic blouse again over here uh, let me know is anybody actually going to be making this blouse number 116b i would be quite curious okay and then we have i think quite possibly what's going to be the most popular thing out of this issue which is the jumpsuit i noticed that with the previews the jumpsuit created quite a lot of excitement a lot of frisson and 
it's you know i'm not a big fan of jumpsuits i won't go into my uh, reasons but i've gone over and over that in my previous uh, videos but you can see it's a lovely looking silhouette but it's not very practical not very practical and this one actually has the opening down the front um rather than the sides it's got a cute little neat mandarin collar and you know what with this one you can just take take that upper half of it and just turn it into a dress boom you're sorted all technical difficulties taken care of but uh, check this out paper clip earrings that's very edgy okay and then we've got the edgy version of the pencil skirt over here where you add some riveting across that slash line so again we're getting these great examples of how you can take essentially the same silhouette and if you have more romantic tendencies in how you dress you can see how you would be able to do that and then if you want a bit more edge um you'd be able to do certain things like this like adding the studs which i think is a nice touch nice touch on this issue and then we've got the second of the men's patterns which is this uh jumper and i'm sure i've seen this jumper before but i think it's in a um, 2012 issue or something like that so it's nice to see it pop up again for those that haven't been collecting magazines since 2012 but yeah i like this this is perfect for autumn winter it's got a high neck zipper for when it gets a little bit too warm and you can uh, pull it down my husband prefers for that option of being able to unzip he doesn't like the one piece jumpers because he likes to have a halfway point where he can have ventilation so to speak and i love the raglan sleeves you can never go wrong with raglan sleeves so this is another one that i would definitely be making for my husband he's due a jumper for autumn winter and then we have this top which is the cut version of the dress from the beginning but this time it's all made in one color so you can see that there's some gathering then to me it's 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 just a bit it's a bit too loose um shaping for my own personal taste personally and then we've got the dress it's a jersey dress um over here in knitted fabric and then we've got the zipper and we've got french french darts i mean for me personally make this in a ponty in a ponty roma skip the front zipper over here and just do a back zipper if needed and then you've got a really lovely sheath dress and that's also a sewing lesson number and then we've got that version again of the wide leg trousers over here but this time it's been made in a needle cord like in a corduroy fabric so really really heavy um on and um you can kind of see here that it's a little bit on the high waist and personally i think that this would have looked so much better did it if it had a waistband on it with a button but there we go we've got another version of that jumper again but this time it's got some welt pockets on here which is more likely my husband likes to have pockets in his jumpers so i'm more likely to make this one rather than this one as a matter of fact because of those pockets over there and it's been made in this really lovely fluffy super fluffy practical one which picks up on the accents of the trousers so again i really do think that this edgy uh, classic edgy photo shoot was done really very very well and then we have a um which one's that no this one let's start off with this one here the masterpiece which is i think it's a it's a jacket cropped jacket so you can see here that it's a cropped length jacket i'm fairly certain that these are ornamental in which case just scrub them off why you have ornamental pockets when you can have real pockets and it's got an interesting collar with a zipper here not one of my favorite boxier jackets i must say personally speaking and then we have a shorter version of the jacket so it goes over here and one two three four full-on pockets and these do not look ornamental these are actual working pockets so i approve of that so quite nice and great styling uh, showing you how you could actually wear this on top of a turtleneck and you're layered up quite nice and warm yeah 
And so here there's just a little bit of a section on uh, making these little dangly purses over here, which is quite a nice little project to do in the meantime if you wanted to. So this is what we have with this uh, birder issue. And I must say, again, very happy with the men's section, would definitely be making this for my husband and for my son as well. Um, yeah, particularly the one who stopped growing now. I don't make jackets like this for the ones that are still growing because they have growth spurts and then they're out of clothes that I've painstakingly made within six months. So no, definitely will be making these trousers at some point. And this, which should be a pretty easy one to make and I do love this I do want to make this because it would be nice to have a shirt pattern that is fitted that I can use to make um, you know with some nice voils and batists and etc so there we go lovelies you let me know what you're going to be making in the comments box and wherever you are in the world i hope that you are also having a fantastic day and also i'm curious are you like me desperately clinging on to summer and not accepting that summer is over and that we need to start thinking about autumn winter sewing i'm not quite there yet i still have some uh, summer sewing things that i need to finish up before i begin to even think of sewing for uh, for the autumn so let me know are you like me clinging on to um summer like a long lost love or have you already embraced the coming of autumn and fall and you've already moved on to that let's chat in the comments box and if you haven't already please do subscribe it helps the channel and also hit that like button and if you've watched until the end i really do appreciate you you're a rock star and until i see you next time lovelies happy sewing bye